when we have a desire to grow closer to Christ, to become better Catholics, um, we're moving in a direction that the devil does not want us to move in. So he attacks us. Uh, he uh, he infiltrates uh, our sense of, of of love and connection with God. He tempts us. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, things and tricks that the devil uses to pull us away from God. I know that you're know, just running a ray of hope. Uh, we're often attacked when we're when we're doing good work. Things have our equipment fails, and you know uh, things don't work out. I mean, it's it's an, a bar- barrage of events, and we've gotten to the point now we we kind of almost anticipate the devil or the demonic to show up. I you know I throw holy water all over the studio. We do the the prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel, um, but we know what is to be expected. So maybe you could advise our viewers and listeners, you know, to 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 create an awareness that whenever we're trying to do good, whenever we're trying to avoid sin, the devil shows up. And and what are the tools that you would recommend to the average Catholic as to how we could fight off the devil and become stronger spiritually? It's important for people to realize the devil tries to attack us in two ways. You know, the devil's attacks can be extraordinary or they can be ordinary. When it comes to extraordinary demonic activity, there can be demonic infestation, the presence of evil in the location or associated with an object, demonic vexation, which are physical attacks, demonic obsession, which are mental attacks. The devil's literally trying to get inside of someone's head and then demonic possession whereby the devil or one of his demons would take control of a person's body, treating that body as if it were its own. For example, using the person's mouth to speak, their eyes to see, their ears to hear. Most people don't ever have to worry about extraordinary demonic activity, but people do need to understand how the devil tries to trip us up in the ordinary circumstances of our daily lives. And when it comes to the ordinary demonic activity, I like to believe that he has a four-stage plan of attack. The words all begin with the letter D. It begins with deception. It leads to division, which leads to diversion, Mm -hmm. which leads to discouragement. Mm -hmm. So deception, the devil wants us to buy into his lies. And when we buy into the lies of the devil, God would want us to repent. But when we don't repent, it leads to division. We find our lives broken and shattered. And when we're broken and shattered, God would want us to repent. But when we don't repent, it leads to diversion. We look for a substitute for God. We recognize that we are empty on the inside. People may turn may turn to addictive behavior. You think of drugs or alcohol, pornography. People want to fill that emptiness inside of themselves and thinking that that's going to make them whole and complete. But ultimately, only God can do that. Mm-hmm. So when people have traveled through deception, which has led to division, which has led to diversion, they finally arrive at discouragement. And I, I believe there are far many people today that are discouraged than they are depressed because people have lost a sense of meaning and purpose and direction in their lives. And when we arrive at discouragement, I believe we arrive at a crossroads. One pathway will lead to death, always spiritual. Think of the number of people today who now say they're atheist, even though they grew up in a traditional Christian home. But sometimes that death can be physical. You look at the rising trend of suicide in society where people have just lost their complete sense of direction and identity. But -hmm. because we're Christians and we're people of hope, the other pathway leads to discipleship. There's that sense of reawakening. I think of John Paul II's call for the new evangelization where people need to wake up to the importance of God in their life and begin to foster that relationship again. People need to realize that God is always ready to welcome us back. We think of the story of the prodigal son. Right. When the prodigal son returns to the father and says, I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would a hired hand. The father listens, but then he doesn't throw it back in his son's face. He knows that his son is in the right place now. And he simply says, let's celebrate. Put a ring on his finger, sandal on his feet, the finest robe, kill the fattened calf. God doesn't care where we've been. He cares where we are. You might think of the good thief on the cross. Jesus says, this day you'll be with me in paradise. We don't know what led up to his reason for being crucified, the good thief, but Jesus could look into his heart and see the goodness there. And so I think for people to realize the most important thing that we can do is to just live out the ordinary aspects of our faith. You know, I like to say that if somebody is a Catholic, if you're going to mass, if you're celebrating the sacraments, if you're praying, if you're reading the Bible, 
the devil is already on the run. Mm. And especially the sacramental life of the church is very powerful. Yeah. Father Gabriel Amorth, the former chief exorcist in Rome, always would tell people that a good confession is better than a an exorcism. Because when we confess our sins, we place them in the hands of God. And once we place them in the hands of God, the devil can no longer use that against us. And going to confession is not about being on a guilt trip. It's about recognizing that the greatest thing we can know in life are not the sins that we commit, but God's love and mercy, because we are all God's children and we are created in his image and likeness. <laughs>